as Bola Tinubu announces that he has informed President Muhammadu Buhari of his decision to run for presidency in 2023, the Ohanes in Digo fumes and alleges injustice. Of course, the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria alleges that sponsors of violence are sabotaging the security of the Southeast region. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. For the fight for the 2023 presidency, he has now taken off, uh, taken a drastic turn as former governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu, has announced that he has informed President Muhammad Buhari of his decision to run for the office of the president in 2023. However, the APC leader said he had yet to publicly disclose his ambition and he was still in consultations with various interest groups. However, the Apex Igbo Social Cultural Organization, Ohane Zindigbo, has fumed against in the development, saying this, this declaration is against the rules of natural justice. In the People's Democratic Party also, a former governor of Kanu State, Rabi Ukwankwaso, running for the presidency, uh, has said that um, he is also throwing his hat into the race. This is just as the publisher of Ovation International, Dele Momodu, and a former presidential spokesman, Donyi Okupe, earlier declared his presidential ambitions. What seems to have happened to the Igbo presidency agenda? A big question that needs to be answered. But joining us to discuss this is Khalifat Ogbara, and we also uh, she is the secretary of SWAGA. We're also being joined uh, by Ayodele Adewale. He is uh, the immediate past executive chairman of the Dauphin local government area, Lagos State, and Odozi Ngodozi, a former president of Ohanes in Digbo FCT chapter. But I want to say thank you uh, to the lady for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Kalifat. Kafilat. Kafilat, great. So the big question is, obviously, everybody now knows because there had been speculations as to if the former governor of Lagos was going to run for presidency, even though we had seen many people, including your group uh, and other groups, asking that he run for this office. Now, he has not necessarily publicly de declared his ambition. He says he's still in consultations. But many people have also probed this his decision to join um, um, the race for presidency. What do you think that he has to offer that will be different from what, you know, the others are offering? Thank you very much for having me. First of all, I would like to say that um, congratulations to all the pressure groups across the country, from the Southwest Agenda to women in Nigeria for Ashwadibola, Betudubu, a lot of them and all the others, for the pressure they have mounted on the leader of the APC, Ashwadibola, Betudubu, to come out and contest and run for the presidency of Nigeria. I want to congratulate everybody. I also want to appreciate Ashwajibola Abed Tinubu for heeding to the call of all Nigerians, the masses, the women, and everybody that has clamored over the last one year that we want somebody like him to contest for the presidency of Nigeria. Now we are going to be witnessing the entrance of an uncommon master strategist embedded with the gifts of identifying and nurturing talents. When you have the right strong general in front, definitely you will not have weak soldiers to work on the field. So this is what we believe that Shadi will bring in on board. We know that he has the political will. I have always said that the political will is a problem that the leadership of this country has always had. Ashwadi Bola Metinubu is going to be someone that will come on board to break barriers, to bring in new entrants. When you have somebody like Ashwadi Bola Metinubu, we are talking about victory for the masses. Victory for women. When Ashwaju comes on board, you will be getting uncommon and competent, world tested hands to come and manage the affairs of this country. Ashwaju Bola Metunubu will use the political will the way he has done in Lagos State. Today, Lagos State has 57 local governments, despite the fact that the Constitution allows only 20. This is what I call political will. Okay. He has turned 37 local governments to be you know, LCDAs, to be able to ensure that grassroots politics really gets to the grassroots, really gets to 
the people. The dividends of democracy gets directly to the people. And he has stood his ground despite all the challenges he faced for creating such local governments. It is only in Lagos State that you will find a BRT where buses are running in the transportation sector to ensure that life is easy for the ordinary man, for the common man. Okay. And so people are made who will be bringing in something very, very different, something uncommon, something unusual. And that is exactly what Nigeria needs to do. We need a visionary leader. We need somebody that is compassionate, that is passionate, and that has the capacity and the political will, the passion for the Nigerian people. And we are so happy, we are so excited that he has come out, even though he has no, he's still saying that he's consulting, but for him to have even made it known publicly to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is the right thing to do. You have okay. to go through the right channel, you have to go through the right process, okay. and this is the process is, you know, he has used to communicate with Nigerian people. We are really excited, we are happy, we are delighted that he has made his ambition known to the people. And I, we are happy that he has heeded. I want to probe world. some of the things that you have said, because I asked that question to know exactly what he is going to bring that would be different from what we already have. Um, yes. um, you said something about a strong general. We already have that and see where it's brought us. Um, we, we, do we necessarily need a strong general? What do, does a strong general bring to the table for Nigerians? I mean, we're, we're bedeviled by yes. insecurity. Just hold on, on one hand. I mean, in fact, every part of this country is uh, experiencing some form of insurgence or deadly killings from all parts of the, you know, the country. What does a strong general bring to the table? You also talked about the fact that he's going to come and break barriers. What sort of barriers are, 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 is he going to be breaking for us? You also talked about him bringing a new entrance of sorts. And, um, of course, he's going to bring a new entrance for masses. He's going to bring tried and tested international hands. These are all the things that we've heard before. The president that is sitting now made those same promises. It took him six months to give us a cabinet because he was waiting for people who were tested and trusted. How has that helped the average Nigerian today? So why should we get a Tinubu if we already have a Buhari in office? The word, the use of a general is just an expression to express, you know, the kind of personality we are looking forward to see. Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu is a different personality from President Muhammad Buhari. President Muhammad Buhari has done his best and of course, you and I know that you can only do your best and leave the rest. He has done the best that he can do, and he has tried a lot for Nigeria. And I believe that that is how far his capacity can, can take us. And of course, he still has over a year to finish his tenure. So we are expecting even much more, despite the fact that people are coming out to you know, express their ambition for 2023. And mm. what I mean by a strong general, and I mean that when somebody that has the right vision and the capacity and the passion to walk is ahead, is leading. Definitely, you expect that the followers will also go in the right direction. Even in, the, in, in private establishments, in different workplaces, in banks and wherever you want to think about, once the leadership is right, I can tell you the followership will be right. And we have seen the example in the way he has led Lagos State. And even as we speak today, you find that Lagos State is the only state where the, you know, the leadership is still consistent with the leadership that we had since 1999. You see that there is order, there is discipline, and there is cohesion. When you have that kind of leadership, it's a very good example for the nation. Okay. In most cases, in most states in the country today, you will not find any state that is like Lagos State, where the leadership is still very, very consistent, and they are very orderly. You will not see a problem in the Lagos State of House of Assembly. Since 1999, we have not witnessed any, and we don't expect to Well, isn't that, isn't that a case of, isn't that because almost everybody in the House of Assembly in Lagos State are in the APC? Of course, you have a rubber stamp legislature. Uh, yeah, you, you can say so, and that is because we have the right leadership in Ashwajibola and Metinobu. That is why Lagos State is still what it is today. And you have seen the monumental, you know, a lot of uh, pro progress has been made in Lagos State. The, uh, the, the succession of the leadership, the governors that we have had over the years, we find that, that most of them have performed exemplary well. You are that I made to be somebody that does not believe whether you are from Lagos State, you are from Imo State, or from anywhere. It's only Lagos State where you find a commissioner that is from the east. It's I, only Lagos State where you find a commissioner that is from the north. Are you, are you very certain about that? Because 
before you say well, well i want to well, I, I want to dispute that because it's not just Lagos state that has other people outsiders as members of their cabinet cross river state is also well, an example well, as we've as also as had as the as same as example know. recently in most states so check your stats well, as, as far as i know i live in lagos state and i'm familiar with lagos state okay. so and i believe that this is somebody that believes in capacity of individuals irrespective of your affiliation your religion your ethnic uh, you know background and whatever you want to think about so we believe that with ashwaju on board we are going to get the best of it ashwaju okay. is somebody that can you know take a decision that can that you would think this can never be and then it will be if somebody that does not mind whatever it takes to get the right result he will uh, definitely get the result for us all right we are dreamt of the idea of our dream and we believe that with ashwaju people are to move on board this is the time we are going to get the results we have always wished all right and that we have always been we're being joined by Comrade Adewale. Let, let, let me throw the next question to him. Um, Comrade, uh, the, the former governor of Lagos State has been quoted to say that there are no rules in aspirations because many asked him that, aren't you comfortable enough with being a kingmaker? And he said that there is no rule book that says a kingmaker cannot wear a crown or throw his hat into the ring to also be made a king. Um, so uh, uh, and in this case, he wants to wear the crown. Um, why do you think that, um, because she's given me a lot of reasons why she thinks that Bola Tinubu is the man for the job. But I'll ask you, why do you think he's the man for the job? Well, good evening. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, first, I would say that um, they're saying that people wear the shoes, you know, wear the pages. And uh, for us, still, I think we decide that it's time to throw uh himself into the ring in salvaging the, the country, uh picking it from where President what I had stopped. It's a very good thing for us in this country because he has demonstrated it not only in the private sector, he has also demonstrated it in government. Uh, we all know how Lagos was uh, pre 1999 I'll start with the economy where uh, Lagos was uh, making uh, about uh, 600 million per month. As soon as we came on board, we walked the revenue system, was able to plug off leakages, and by the time he was leaving it, the leader with over 14 billion per month. You should also remember that in Lagos, we had mammoth of refugees all over the place. As soon as he was a genius in that to make that an issue. We were able to bring Hegel's within the civil service, outside of the diaspora, and within the Nigerian inquiry. Together, to put up a roadmap for Lagos State, and that roadmap also presented successive governors that have worked with the roadmap, and we can see where Lagos is today. That's why it's very tolerant. You saw what we also did in Egypt. There was one mobile guy, huge leakage. He was able to block, block it. Uh, mobile was just a, a tenant in a building that was just opposite the CMS library. Today, mobile, Exxon Mobile have uh, an edifice that we call their headquarters in Victoria Island. We did similar thing in the educational system here in Lagos, and beyond that, we will not take that away from him. That if not for Asuaji's effort, and that of all civil society members, and of course Nigerians, that fought against the military junta, the democracy that we are celebrating today, that we are all enjoying today, even if it has not taken us to Eldorado yet, would not have been in place. So if we have decided, after learning from outside the field of play and within the public that they have acquired both private, both uh, 20 years, and have put up a plan to continue from where President Bona. I think we're having start. connection issues with you. A comrade, I think we're having connection issues. You're going in and out. But if you can hear me, I'm just going to throw in a question. Uh, or rather, a comment. You, you, you've just been telling us about, this, giving us the scorecard of the former governor. 
um, of the state. Of course, these are scorecards that maybe many other governors might have. But what does he have to offer the people? Projects, infrastructural development is a must. It's part of the duty of a person who decides to run a state or a country. What else is he bringing to the table? This is what I'm waiting to hear. What he's going to bring to me, you know, is his uh, political camp, embedded in the world. As you know right now, Nigeria is seriously in debt to show any financial institution. As we are going to bring his mouth in working around the economy to make sure that these debts are not only paid, but of course infrastructure and more. I'll take you back to 1999, and of course in the year 2000, when Ashwadi decided to embark on a, 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 a creation of, of an alternative energy source to power Lagos and all of that, despite the fact that the Obasanjo administration tried to stop them, remember the Enron project that Ashwadi embarked on to make Lagos independent to the extent that they were producing their own energy. Today, the Delta State government is celebrating independent energy source that they are using to power, to power their, 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 their secretariat. In fact, the company that produced that energy for Delta State happened to be a, a company that is owned by a friend of mine that we grew up together, and an Indian. Now, what I'm saying is, if Asiwa do have not embarked on that voyage, I think by now, the energy stream of Nigeria will still be limited to the federal government. Interesting. I thought we could bring that on board to make sure that we solve our energy question. And okay, I'm going to have to, I'm, go I'm to, have to put a plug, I'll pull the plug on you for a bit. Let's see if we can get you back, get you out and bring you back in because we're having connection issues with you. But I'm throwing this back to um, our, our lady guest. Um, let's look at some of the um, allegations that have been leveled against the former governor that are still uh, in view as we speak. Of course, he's, he's declared his intention. These things will obviously come back up, uh, you know, to catch air. Um, many have said that there are potential banana peels on the way for him and that this might bring some form of a, a, a tumble and a fall uh, as he continues on this journey uh, if he decides to follow it through. Um, the first issue is, of course, his educational, uh, you know, uh, qualifications or lack of it, which, you know, uh, has refused to go away. Like I said, many of these things will keep creeping back up. Um, and and some, so many people are saying this might haunt him big time. The question is, did he really attend a government college, Ibadan, as he claimed? Um, what evidence can he tender to support, you know, the claim where his contemporaries for years had, you know, and he had spent... Um, you know, his whole time. So these are some of the questions. Do you think that he might have the answers when he decides finally that he is running or he will, if he becomes a flag bearer of the party? These allegations are still hanging. And if he had issues with his qualification, he wouldn't have been a governor in the first place. Neither would he have been a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we would not be joining issues with people who have little or nothing to offer, who wants to pull people down. So we believe that Ashwadu has all the necessary and required qualification that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria requires to contest and be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There's also an EFCC case that's pending, of course, has been asked to um, come and testify. Of course, the CCB had uh, been on that issue. It's still a lingering case. These, these these are cases that will still come back. Yes, it's a case of what year? <laughs> Go ahead. Well, as funny as it sounds, these are issues that will keep cropping up. Everybody wants to know what exactly happened, especially the qualification issue. You saw what happened with the president. Um, at some point, um, the SSC here in Nigeria had to give the president a certificate of sorts or backdate it. This will definitely crop up in the process of things. But let's put uh, a pause on that. Let me come back to the issue of those that he will be running against. Um, we've seen, like I said at the beginning, the likes of a Kwan Kwaso who has um, the corners. We've also seen and heard you know, uh, rumors of the Secretary of State Governor who might be interested. And 
an array of so many of them. Does he stand a chance? Of course, the issue of zoning still comes to play here where people are saying, well, the power must come to the South. But we also have a vice president who is also a member of the political party. What does that do to the structure of the APC here in the Southwest? Well, all those names you have mentioned, they are all still speculations. Now that Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu has come out to say that he wants to contest, that he has the interest to contest to be the president of Nigeria, it is those that now come out after this declaration that we will know that they are real contestants. So all those names are still speculations. From today on, we'll start counting those that are really going to contest. But I can tell you that with the entrance of Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu into the race, some of those names that Nigerians think we contest, will not come out to contest anymore. Okay. Now, many Nigerians seem to be really vexed. Some are excited. We see a split, you know, a majority of people either for or against his declaration or his intent declaration. And we want to quickly go to social media to take some of those reactions and then uh, we'll let you speak on it. So um, we'll just run them on the screen. Some people are, are saying that, look, the president who is now in power was helped and backed by the former governor and the display or rather the the things that have been done under this administration are not necessarily palatable. So why should they allow the man, the kingmaker, now who has declared his intent to run for that same office? Um, somebody here is saying that if you are campaigning for Atiku, you shouldn't criticize those that are campaigning for Tinubu. There's no difference between both. Both are old. Both have been at the realm of affairs for years. Both were too desperate to ignore Buhari's incompetence just for the agreed. That's, okay. uh, yeah. First of all, let me take it from the first one. Don't forget that um, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinobu was one of the champions that, you know, campaigned for uh, President Muhammad Buhari to come on board. And we all know that PDP had 16 years of democratic rule of this country. And we, we, we all cannot immediately forget the rot that Nigeria went through under that leadership for 16 years. So APC is the new and a fresh breath in just about six years plus. How fresh is that yeah, breath and how has that fresh breath helped us? Well, You're talking very about very the PDP who's because been here for 16 years. Should, should Nigerians, because hold on, should Nigerians be waiting? Hang on, just hang on, hang on. Should Nigerians wait for another 16 years to be able to tell if the APC is also no, as terrible as the PDP? So what case are you trying to. to make? What I'm trying to say is that Nigeria had a lot of issues in the last 16 years of PDP. And APC had a lot of cleanup to do. And have they if, so have they cleaned up? Have they been to, able to address any of those issues that you're talking been able about? To address a lot of the issues. You can One of which is the rail system has started working in Nigeria. A that is a problem. Is that a problem? Invested is that in really? Rail system I'm sorry. It has never worked. Is the rail Today, a problem for you and members of your constituency, the people who are in Swaga? Is the rail system a major problem for you? For Nigerians, compared to the insecurity benefit. that we're facing, is that really it's a for problem? Nigerians and Nigerians are all benefiting the rail system. No, no, no. I, I'm not asking if it's a necessity. I'm asking, that. is it a problem in the hierarchy of things that you, as a Nigerian, would be? itemizing as a problem, is the railway a problem for you compared to the insecurity that we're it facing? It has aided the transportation system in the country. Of okay. course it has aided the transportation uh, problem in the country. The okay. APC-led government has helped in a lot of coping of uh, corruption in the country as we speak today. You find out that all those millions and a lot of money that EFCC has recovered today is from all the people that had led and worked with the PDP-led government. Have those monies been accounted for so far? Those monies that the government, uh, the corruption well, and the monies, have they been get, accounted for? Maybe if you get across to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, they will be able to tell you how far they have been oh, able to Should it be a secret if monies, if monies are recovered? Should it be a oh, secret or shrouded in secrecy? Uh, secrecy? Do well, I necessarily I have to go to the EFCC to find out? The Financial Crimes Commission is an independent commission that should be able to account for that. And the issue of zoning, when you are talking about zoning in Nigeria, is a northern and a southern thing. And of course, most of the time, we tend to focus on what divides us and act as if, as if these boundaries cannot be traversed, as if these affiliations 
are the very source of our humanity. Before all this uh, ethnicity, religious background and everything, we are first humans. And we should, first of all, look at the human being, the personality, and the person we are talking about beyond our affiliation. I hope you are still there. I can't Yes, I, 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 I can hear you. Hear you. All right. And if you are talking about the age as well, there are so many countries where people that are over 70 have led. Even in America today, we know Joe Biden, we know his age, the former president of America, a lot of other countries, even in Africa, Ghana... I Guinea, do not know if there's a basis for comparison of, uh, of President Joe Biden yes, with so, any politician in so this country. We do respect to all our politicians. About, uh, 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 zoning or age or whatever. We, are, we believe in Ashwajibola Bola Ahmed Tinubu. We believe in his leadership. Okay. We have witnessed it before in Lagos State. And we believe that it's going to bring the best on board okay. for Nigeria. All right. We're well, just being joined by uh, Modozi. He is uh, um, one of our guests. He was having trouble joining us. Modozi, I, I want to quickly ask you because we're running out of time. Um, your group, the Social Cultural Group Ohanizi, has been fuming since the declaration by the former governor of Lagos State. And you're alleging that this is some form of um, injustice. How is this an injustice? I, I'd like to understand that. Well, uh, Nigeria is built originally on a tripod. And uh, as we're developing now, we're developing and having some other entities that are just bringing up to show their presence in Nigeria. Originally, in the pre-independence and the immediate after independence Nigeria, the tripod of Nigeria was the east, the west, and the north. And uh, just in the, since 1999, in this dispensation, we've seen the pendulum of leadership swing from the north to the south. Obasanjo, after his eight years, took the leadership to Kasina, the current president's home state, and the Omar Yabaradua was produced as our president. But unfortunately, due to uh, demise and uh, nature, he couldn't complete that tenor. Good luck from the south to cover. And after good luck, even during good luck, there was a there was a clamor for power to return to the north. And this power returned to the north. We all saw the way it went back. And by the special grace of God, next year it will be eight years since General Mohammed Buhari came into the saddle as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now as the thing is swinging to the, to the south, it is quite a pity that somebody from the southwest, in the person of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Asiwaju, the Jagaban of Nigeria, a, a region that has produced a president for, for eight years. But there is, he's not committing a crime. There is no law uh, that is against it, it, anybody it, 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 in the it, it, South it, it, running. It is, so why is it, it an is, injustice? It is, his, it is his constitutional right. I'm not denying exactly. that. But for equity and justice, there's a difference between justice and the law. Now for equity and justice, must allow people who have not tested When you say power, allow, is, is it that the hands standard. of the people in the southeast are tied? Because I'm trying to understand. I'm not attacking Excuse you. Me. I'm my sister. Is you anybody stopping anybody from sorry, the southeast sorry. to join no, 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 no. this beyond, particular beyond presidential beyond race? We expect, we expect a solidarity from characters like... Has, has there been talks? Has the southeast liaised yeah. with the southeast, the southwest and the south-south for now. this as unity to happen? If, as I talk to you now, I'll uh, get down to the level of saying it's a mischief on the part of the, my, the rebel Jagaban to contest for this president because even his social cultural group, Afenifere, have shown their, their, their displeasure with their own sons gasping for this position when the South East is coming for it. At this point, Tinubu is breaking the, 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 little, the little fabric holding the unity of the South by this action. Hmm. I'm telling you the truth. The, the little fabric holding the unity of the South is, is, is being endangered at this point because of this singular ambition. Yes, the man has done good in Lagos. He has done well. But, but he, he says that this has been his lifelong ambition. So everybody's allowed to come to play. Let the people decide why should this be called an injustice if all of us are allowed to come and play. Quickly, because we need to round this up. I think that we lost uh, that connection, but, um, well, I want to say thank you to all our guests who have been part of the conversation. Um, we appreciate your thoughts and your comments, but we have to go on a quick break.